What is the kernel of the matrix transformation given by matrix A? The kernel of a matrix transformation is the set of all input vectors x in Rn, or in our case, in R3, such that t of vector x equals the zero vector. To find a basis for the kernel of t, we need to solve the equation matrix A times vector x equals the zero vector. The vectors in the spanning set form a basis for the kernel of t. And the number of free variables will indicate how many vectors are in a basis. Let's set this up on the next slide. Again, we need to solve matrix A times vector x equals the zero vector. So let's go ahead and set it up. Vector x is any vector in R3. Let's let the vector x be the vector with components x1, x2, and x3. And this product must equal the zero vector in R3. And now we need to solve the system. Let's go ahead and write an augmented matrix where the first row is 1, 3, 4, 0. And the second row is 0, negative 1, negative 1, 0. And the third row is 2, 0, 2, 0. The next step is to write the augmented matrix in reduced row echelon form, which I've already done to save time. The first row is 1, 0, 1, 0. The second row is 0, 1, 1, 0. And the third row is a row of zeros. Let's go ahead and label the columns. Notice we have pivots in column one and column two, but not column three. We know x3 is a free variable. The first row indicates x1 plus x3 equals zero. The second row indicates that x2 plus x3 equals zero. And we know x3 is a free variable. Let's let x3 equal x3. The next step is to solve the first equation for x1 and the second equation for x2 since x3 is the free variable. So we have x1 equals negative x3, x2 equals negative x3, and of course x3 is still equal to x3. But let's go ahead and parameterize the solution by letting x3 equal t, and therefore x1 equals negative t, x2 equals negative t, and x3 equals t. So now we know all the vectors x in R3 such that t of vector x equals a zero vector are in the form of negative t, negative t, t. If we factor out the t, we have t times the vector negative one at negative one, one. So this vector in the spanning set, the vector negative one, negative one, one, forms the basis for the kernel of t. All the linear combinations of this vector form a line. If we go back to our question, we're asked the kernel is a line passing to the origin with the direction vector of what? Well, this basis vector here does give us a direction vector for the line, as well as any scalar multiple of this vector. So if we look at our choices here, notice how we don't have a choice of the vector negative one, negative one, one. That doesn't mean our work is incorrect. Remember, t could be any value so if we let t, for example, equal negative one, then the direction vector would be the vector one, one, negative one. And notice this is one of the choices. It's the fourth choice here. So we would have to select the vector one, one, negative one for the direction vector for the line that represents the kernel of the matrix transformation. I hope you found this helpful.